deja vu. You're standing in line at the grocery store. Suddenly, you know exactly what's about to happen. The cashier will sneeze, the person ahead will fumble for exact change, and someone will drop their phone. And then it all unfolds precisely as you predicted. We call this deja vu, but what if it's something more? Scientists explain it as neural misfiring. Your brain accidentally tags the present as a memory. But here's the unsettling part. Sometimes these glitches are incredibly specific and accurate. Consider this. If your brain is just malfunctioning, why does deja vu often come with an eerie sense of knowing what happens next? What if these moments aren't glitches in your mind, but glimpses of a script you've already lived through? Mandela Effect, let me ask you something simple. What color is the Coca-Cola logo? Red, obviously. Now, does Curious George have a tail? Think carefully before you answer. If you said yes, you've just experienced something called the Mandela Effect. Curious George has never had a tail. Not in the books, not in the movies, nowhere. Yet thousands of people remember him with one. This phenomenon gets its name from Nelson Mandela. Countless people remember him dying in prison during the 1980s, complete with news coverage and global mourning. Except he didn't die until 2013 after serving as South Africa's president. The standard explanation? Human memory is unreliable, and false memories spread through suggestion. But what if these aren't memory errors? What if they're evidence of reality being edited? Like someone's constantly updating the world's source code. But some of us still remember the previous versions. Missing time. It's 2.15 p.m. You're reading a book fully alert and focused. You blink and suddenly it's 4.20 p.m. You haven't moved. You weren't tired. Over two hours have simply vanished. This is called dissociative time loss. And while it's often explained by mental autopilot or stress, some cases are harder to dismiss. People report losing time while having conversations, during important meetings, or while doing familiar tasks at home. The strangest part, many describe a nagging feeling that something important happened during those missing hours, something they're not supposed to remember. It's as if someone edited their personal timeline, cutting out scenes that weren't meant for their eyes. What if consciousness isn't continuous? What if we're occasionally taken offline for updates or maintenance, and most of us never notice the gaps? Bystander effect. A woman collapses on a busy sidewalk. Dozens of people witness it. She's clearly in distress, maybe having a medical emergency. And everyone just watches. No one helps. No one even calls for help. Psychology calls this the bystander effect, when responsibility gets diffused among groups. But sometimes this phenomenon goes beyond social psychology into something more disturbing. There are documented cases where large groups of people stood motionless while watching preventable tragedies unfold. Not because they were scared or uncertain, but because they seemed inactive. Waiting for someone else to initiate the response protocol. What if not everyone processes reality the same way? What if some people operate more like background characters, only becoming truly active when directly engaged? Doppelgangers. You're walking through a mall when you see someone who looks exactly like you. Not similar, identical. Same clothes, same walk, same everything. They notice you too, and for a moment, you're both frozen, staring at your perfect duplicate. Doppelganger sightings have been reported throughout history. Abraham Lincoln claimed to see two reflections of himself in a mirror shortly before his assassination. One normal, one pale and ghostly. His wife interpreted this as a death omen. She was right. Modern reports describe even stranger encounters 
people meeting their doubles who seem to know things about them they shouldn't know, or who appear to be living slightly different versions of their lives. Are these coincidences, hallucinations, or glimpses of parallel versions of ourselves bleeding through reality's boundaries? Sleep paralysis. You wake up in the middle of the night. Your eyes are open. You can see everything clearly, but you cannot move a single muscle. You try to call out, but no sound comes. And then you sense it. Something standing at the foot of your bed, watching you. This is sleep paralysis, and the medical explanation is straightforward. Your mind wakes up while your body remains in REM sleep's natural paralysis. It should last seconds, maybe a minute, but here's what science struggles to explain. Why do people across different cultures, time periods, and continents all report seeing the same dark figure? If this is just random brain static, why is the hallucination so consistent? Some cultures have names for these entities. The old hag, the shadow people, the night watchers. What if sleep paralysis isn't a malfunction, but the one time our consciousness is vulnerable enough to perceive things that are always there? Spontaneous human combustion. Mary Reeser was sitting in her apartment in 1951 reading a book. The next morning, investigators found her reduced to a pile of ash and a few bone fragments. The chair she was sitting in? Barely damaged. The newspapers next to her? Untouched. This is spontaneous human combustion. People literally burning from the inside out with no external ignition source. Science offers theories like the wick effect, where body fat acts as fuel, but these explanations fall apart under scrutiny. The temperatures required to reduce a human body to ash would destroy everything in the immediate area. Yet in many cases, furniture inches away remains pristine. It's as if the person experienced some kind of catastrophic internal error that only affected them. What if some individuals occasionally trigger a fatal system glitch? A biological process that goes so wrong it becomes impossible? Quantum immortality. Satomu Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima on business when the first atomic bomb was dropped. He survived. He returned home to Nagasaki just in time for the second bomb. He survived that too. He lived to be 93. This is either the most incredible luck in human history or evidence of something called quantum immortality. The idea that your consciousness can only exist in timelines where you survive. Every time you should die, you automatically shift to the nearest reality where you barely made it. From your perspective, you never die. You just keep experiencing increasingly unlikely survivals, always finding yourself in the timeline where you somehow pulled through. But here's the terrifying question. If this is real, how many close calls have you already forgotten? How many versions of you didn't make it to today? These glitches might be coincidences, medical phenomena, or tricks of perception. Or they might be something more. Cracks in a reality that's more fragile and programmable than we ever imagined. The next time you experience deja vu, lose time, or witness something that doesn't quite make sense, Ask yourself, did reality just glitch? And more importantly, are you supposed to notice? What strange experiences have you had that made you question reality? Let me know in the comments below.